Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Big Dave Show. I haven't done a show in a while. Uh, this ain't no uh, funny show or review. This is uh, some this is an opinion show and uh, man, my hair looks crap, but I just took a break from uh, cleaning up the house that I own, uh, or buying I should say. We're going to talk about written versus buying a home. I bought my you know, three bedroom house, two car garage back in uh, 2011 during a buyer's market. So I bought it. I bought it at a pretty good time, you know. When the, when home values were kind of low, you know, buy low, sell high. You know, I was living with my grandmother at the time, and I wanted my own place, and I could never really afford to rent. All the rentals, you know, all the you know, and all the rental property, you know, all the rentals. Uh, you know, around here are pretty are pretty outrageous. You know, they're I mean I mean compared to compared to uh, compared to other cities, Lowell is a pretty cheap city. Uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck here in uh, in, in Louisville, Kentucky. You know, uh, but uh, you know, ample, you know. So I was like, man, I looked there and they were sending me. I, I called. I was looking at this one house right right in front of my grand right in front of my grandmother's. Uh, yeah, a street over from my grandmother. I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm interested. I was looking at different websites. It's like, hey, man, you can uh, rent, you know, you can uh, buy, you can buy a home. Your house payment's going to be cheaper than your than your rent, and that is very true. That is very, that is very true. That your home house payments are cheaper, or will be a little bit cheaper than your rent. Right, right now I'm paying. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how much I pay because, you know, that, that's not your business. But what I pay for my uh, three bedroom uh, house, you know, it's a small house, nothing real large, you know, but you know, for a three bedroom house with two car garage, I can't touch a one bedroom apartment for. I cannot touch a one bedroom apartment for. The advantage is about buying versus renting is obvious. One is it's going to be cheaper than cheaper than rent. Yes, my house payment is lower than I can rent a one bedroom, you know, apartment, you know, apartment for. And uh, that, that's for starters. Two, when you rent, you're just pissing your money away. You're going to be paying that rental. You're going to be paying that rent. Oh, I'm gonna pay that rent, and uh, and it's and it's going to guarantee, it's going to guarantee to increase whenever you rent. It's going to guarantee. It's going to guarantee that that every once a year, with fifty bucks here, hundred bucks here, two hundred bucks there, and, and eventually it's like, holy shit, I can't afford to live where I'm living, you know, anymore. You know, yes, cost of living is not keeping up with, uh, with you know, with wages. In most instances, most people have to have 10%. Here's where the disadvantage is for a lot of people. A lot of people who, you know, their their cost of living, they can't save money. They can't, you know, do certain things. You know, I was kind of, you know. I was kind of done with my money, and I could have had a good size down payment, but I didn't have a good size down payment. But you know, I I, I was fortunate to have the VA home loan, which is uh, the VA home loan uh, is, is great for veterans. You know, you don't have to have, have no money down, no uh, no MPI, you know, which is mortgage premium insurance, uh, which is pretty much a rip off. Yeah, you because know, the government kind of guarantees you. Know, I mean, you, you have to have a you have to have approved credit. You have to have good credit to get it. But it, you know, there's a certain amount that's guaranteed. So I bought back in 2011. You had a steady job going. I was right at the courthouse. I think maybe had seven, eight years. Uh, but yeah, so I went in there and uh, I was like, man, I want my own place, you know. And I was like, man, you know, I said, I said, man, this is this, this is good. Good to go. It's cheaper than renting a place, and and you're not pissing your money away. You're not making some guy rich, or paying some guy to you know, you know, to, you know. If, if you're a good tenant, you're making some guy rich. If you're if you're a guy that tears the shit out of the place, you're not making you're not making you're not making anybody you know, you know, rich. But but you're just throwing your money away. Whenever you rent, you're just throwing your money away, and that thing will never be paid up because. 
you're you're renting versus buying. Eventually, when you buy, you know, at the end, at the end, at the end of at, after you pay everything off, you own that house. That's yours. Buy by house payment. Buy by house payment, and uh, and you don't have to worry about you know. All you have to worry about is insurance and taxes. Insurance and taxes, you know, and that's another thing is, is my insurance and my taxes are taken out, are, are included in my house payment. Insurance, taxes, interest, and uh, principal, you know, is all wrapped up. All that together is still cheaper than my three bedroom house, is still cheaper to pay a month than my. Than renting a one bedroom apartment. You know, and if you decide to get up and move and you're moving out of town or something, depending on what equity you have in there, and and, and this is where pro and if the property value goes up and whatever you, whatever money you put in that house, you're gonna get back more or you know, like right now, say I decide to sell now, which I won't, which I won't sell because one, I, I, I love my home, it's, I, I love my neighbors, I got awesome neighbors now. Uh, I can't ask for a better neighbor than uh, than Joe next door, and uh, and I know all the neighbors are pretty cool around here, and you know it's a, you know decent, and I'm kind of like hit hitting off, you know, in in kind of in a cut here with nobody, no traffic, you know, you know it's a you know working class neighborhood. It's not rich, not poor, it's somewhere, you know, kind of, you know, lower to middle income, you know, I'm living a, you know, I mean, that's what's the great thing about Woods, you know, and, and and all the guys I work with, I don't make very much, I'm not going to lie to you, but all the guys I work with, it's like, dude, who do you live with? I said, man, I, I, it's just me and my cat, man, it's me and her highness, that's all I want here, that's all me and her highness. Yeah, yeah, me. Like I said, eventually that thing will be paid off. But you know the you know the disadvantages of, of buying is if you have a job that uh, let's say you have a job that travels around, or you may you may be in Louisville one, one year, maybe in Charlotte, next Atlanta, Chicago, New York, or wherever you're going and going Texas, Dallas, well, whatever you know, wherever you're going, uh, you know. That, that's where the little bit of a pain in the ass comes is trying to sell that thing, you know. You know, right now, right now it's a good time to sell. But when I when I was buying back in 2011, I tell you the the real the realtors were struggling. The real, you know, and I and the, you know, the, you know they got all these balloon. You know, people were getting foreclosed on left and right. You had balloon loans and everything was going out of the ass, you know. And um, but you know. Everything was going out of their ass, you know. You know, you can't rent. You know, you know the rent, rental property is doing good because people people couldn't afford. It. They got kicked out of their homes, and uh, yeah, and uh, like I said, that's where that's a disadvantage. And uh, and let's say if you're not handy, you know, this is where you know, you have to be sure to save up the difference from you know what you would pay in rent that your house payment. To make sure you're disciplined to save some money because you know things are going to break down around the house but still it's still a lot better than uh, going out and just throwing your money away and uh, filling some guys pockets up you know especially living in an apartment complex uh, you know I mean there's things you got there's extra work you got to do around the house you know you got to mow the lawn and you know, you got you got to do everything yourself, or have enough money saved back to have somebody doing it. So you know, you know, you know, everything's you know kind of you know, it'd be kind of handy in that. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a way better deal than you know. Like I said, the only thing that make my house payment go up is if insurance goes up or uh, if. Uh, if I don't have enough money in escrow to cover the insurance or taxes, uh, it went up one year. I, I think like eighty bucks. But but you know, then I had a then I had an escrow surplus. Then that went back down to where I went. E e even going up eighty bucks, it was still cheaper than renting a one bedroom apartment. But then then once I had that uh, over overage, and uh, here's another cool thing about buying a home. Once you have an overage, if you have an overage. In your, uh, 
in your escrow account at the end of the year, then what will happen is uh, the bank will send you a check. It's pretty cool, you know. You know, it's I get like about five hundred dollars you know, a year sometimes around around about June or so. I get about five hundred. You know, I'll see this check. I'm like, what's this? Oh, I had an overage. I can I can either put that on my house payment, pay extra principal, or put it back into my uh, put it back into my uh, you know escrow account so I have more es so keep it from going up. But sometimes your insurance goes up, taxes go up. That's the only thing that will raise your, uh, if, if you have a fixed, keyword fixed, if you have a fixed, you know, if you have a fixed, in, if you have a fixed interest loan, not, not one of these balloon loans where everybody was, where they were preying on poor communities and that, you know, people, you know, that. You know, not these balloon loans. And, you know, where one one minute you'll you'll have your your interest be low about three point five, and the next next year it'll be like eleven, twelve, something. Be like, holy shit, I can't afford this. And it's a policy. You know, the, the old you know the deregulation and that the banks made made like policies for banks to foreclose and you know, and they lost a lot of money on the foreclosure crisis. I remember back in 2001 when I got out, and I mar and I marked this crisis because I know people are buying homes left and right. You know, I mean, new construction, and I, and I told my dad, I said, he 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 didn't believe me. He, I said, I said, there's too many people out there buying houses that can't afford, can't afford to buy homes. They're buying these ridiculously priced. Homes and they had, and they had jobs that didn't pay very much. I said, I said, I said, watch this. I said, I said, something bad's going to happen. About four or five years later, uh, all the way back about two, two, two about two thousand six, two thousand seven, and and I would hate to say, tell me that I was right. Yeah, I didn't say it, but I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, yep, I'm right. I said, something bad's going to happen. You know, people are getting these, you know, the balloon loans and that. But, you know, yeah, it's it's better overall deal, man. You know, like all people I work with, they have a husband or a wife or roommates living at home with mom and dad and, uh, and you know, and paying outrageous uh, rent costs. You know, I had a buddy of mine. Uh, he's I work with, uh, or or I should say, co op Me, yeah, I mean, I'm friendly with the guy. I'm not. I don't. I don't go out and drink beers. He he just uh, got him a two bedroom apartment, paying like three hundred dollars more a month than I am buying this. You know, your house buying this house, and he's gonna be you know, you know. You know, I know he has kids and all, but he's gonna be struggling. You know, just to pay the rent, and like I say, you're you're, th you're throwing the money money away. And you know, like I say, you're, when you rent, you're throwing, you're, you're just making some guy rich. You're just making you know, you know, and, and you're not building any equity. You're just gonna be paying that all your life, and and unfortunately, Social Security can't cover it. You know, Social Security. A lot of people don't have retirements out there, so your Social Security check can't buy, can't you know, can't cover it. And but like I said, you know, I've got you know, a pretty good deal here with a. Uh, I'm looking out that window there, but uh, see a couple of people don't know your neighbors on by. But yeah, you, know, you know, it's you know, like I said, buying versus renting's a lot better. Like, like I said, if you have a steady job where you're going to be li living in the same, or you're living in the same city. You know, where you're living in the same city, you know, uh, it, it, it's a lot, but it's a lot better than wasting waste your, waste your damn money just making some guy rich, man. You know, I got a buddy of mine uh, down here uh, in South Florida, Joey. Uh, congratulations on your home ownership, buddy. Uh, I may have to go down there and see see your home there in South Florida one of these days. Uh, get a little bit, a little extra money coming in, and uh, yeah, uh, congratulations, buddy. You know, congratulations on your new home down there and 
he used to be a home loan and uh, yeah, you know, I had a real, I had my realtor helped me out as far as getting all the process and paperwork, you know. She was real helpful and real explaining everything that, you know, you know, but like I said, when you buy in a buyer's market like that, you know, uh, back when I bought, right now it's a seller's market. Right now it's a seller's market, which is really, you know, which is really good, you know, which is, if you're wanting to sell and move out, it's good, but, you know, I want to hold on to my home. I, you know, I like it, you know, I like my neighbors. I don't have to worry about some, you know, asshole, you know, pounding on the walls and, you know, uh, some assholes that don't have control over his kids running around, or some asshole blaring his stereo, boom, 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 or you know, here you know, you know, couples getting it on, you know, yeah, I'm here in my quiet home, you know, you know, you know, my, like I said, my neighbors are cool, and and, and I'm building equity, and uh, it's a great thing, and their advantage about the home is. You can paint the walls any car you want. You can build a deck. You can, you know, enhance the value of the home if you want. And and, and and if you so do, I think it's a dumb idea, but if you so do, you can borrow against it, home equity loan. But I would highly discourage anybody from getting a home equity loan unless it's the very last resort. Do not get a home equity loan. You know, I know people that lost their home because they, they got a home equity loan. Yeah, it's not a good deal, man. But other than that, you know, buying a home versus renting's a hell lot better. Buying's a hell lot better than renting. All right, uh, support the Big Dave Show. Tell me uh, what you like underneath there. And uh, yeah, I know this was a long, long video. Uh, Y'all have a good one. Peace out. Take care of yourselves.